The United States, and especially New England, has for centuries had a deep connection with the Emerald Isle. Over 34 million people claim Irish ancestry in the United States, which is seven times the current population of Ireland. In Massachusetts alone, one and a half million people claim Irish heritage, including myself and my wife's family, whose parents immigrated from Ireland. With our bags packed and our crew eager to experience some Irish hospitality and culture that included song and cheer, we boarded our five-hour flight and eventually touched down in the land of green at Shannon Airport. After a short but dramatic car trip, driving on the opposite side of the road with a manual shift now on my left, we arrived at the beautiful Harbor House Bed and Breakfast, located on the Marie's Peninsula. Known as a destination on the Wild Atlantic Way, the Harbor House boasts a full-service restaurant with panoramic views overlooking the oceanside cliffs and picturesque islands nearby. With a backdrop of emerald mountains rolling into a shimmering sea, it's been rated as one of the best places to stay in County Kerry. The first stop on our trip was to County Kerry in the southwest of Ireland. There we met up with Paul O'Reilly, the angling advisor for Inland Fisheries Ireland. Due to a stubborn drought throughout the country for months, Paul determined the best place to begin our fishing trip was on the Owen Moore River in Clahan. This is pretty much what Ireland... The, this is what it's all about. This, this is like a This postcard. is the Owen Moore River, right? Running into sea here in Clahan on the north side of the Dingle Peninsula, County Kerry, running down from the Mount Brandon up here in the valley. Okay, and you've got the tide is just filling down below us about a couple of hundred yards down. We've got sea rum brown trout coming in now as we speak, and we've got some summer salmon, some grills as we call them here. But your water level's low right now, huh? Water levels are really low, you know. Normally in Ireland, we're gonna have lots and lots of rain through July and August. This year, the year on the water meter come over, we've had a drought. This last <laughs> six or seven weeks, we've got water restrictions. We haven't had any rain. It's been the, the driest June and July in 80 years. Beautiful stretch of water. We've got a lot of sea run trout here lower down in the pool. They're all turning. You can see them turning on the sides. That means the rain is gonna come soon. So we're hoping for some rain overnight. The best chances is if we get a few practice casts in here earlier on in the day, later on when it starts to get dark, we'll fish down and we've got a really good chance of hooking into some sea runs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish. We're gonna fish nine foot six weight rods with floating lines. We're gonna fish two flies, bed size 12, small black traditional Irish flies. And we're gonna cast them across the stream and let them come down like that. And just hold the line. Keep casting across at 45 degrees and fishing traditional wet fly style. And the if fish go crazy. I'm gonna drop it at 45. I'm gonna pick it up at 45. That's it. Just, just cast let it, it down, swing. let it swing around into this bank here. Hopefully the All fish right. will take. So that's it, you just want to cast across the stream, mend the line a little bit. Oh, Look at this. Another little guy had a go. So they, could be, they could be just small brown trout having a go, but we can see there's a lot of sea run browns, and there's even a few salmon in the pool. If we just had another six or seven inches of water, we'd have a real good chance of catching some of those guys. Now, with the rain that's expected for tomorrow, yeah. can this raise that oh, high yeah. in one day? Oh yeah, the whole valley, it's a big bowl shape, okay? We've got six or seven lakes up there in the valley yeah. too. You will see little rivers running down all of those hillsides, all coming into this river. The river will rise in a few hours, okay? Once it starts to drop again, you get some real good fishing. So when the river is dropping away, you might have two hour time limit when the fish will go crazy. When the sea trout will run up, even over a wet stone, they say the sea trout will run. They don't need a huge amount yeah. of rain, but the salmon, once they know that the fresh water's coming in the river, they'll start to run. Despite our best attempts, the fish remained finicky, just as Paul predicted. Although we saw plenty of fish in the river, the lack of rain had stalled their migration upstream and prevented them from wanting to feed. With the promise of a little rain moving into the mountains in the evening, we decided to wait until nightfall, when a rising river and the comfort of darkness might prompt the fish to bite again.
Armed with headlamps and our fly gear, we met up with Frank Munzel, protector of the Owen Moore fishery, a river he himself turned back from the brink. With the lights scaring the fish, Frank indicated it was time to douse the lights if we wanted to catch fish. You probably know this is better than anyone anywhere out here right now. I've been on this river since I could walk. I made the first 300 yards of the river fly only. People. Uh, I missed a little bit. No bother. There it is. Oh, we just hit it. There he is. Good man. Good man. Well done. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll Come on in if you want to light it up. I'll walk him right over your shoulder. Yeah, you're fine. Yeah. Okay. I'll wet my hands. You tell me when you want me to pick him up. Yeah, when you're when you're ready, Frank. Okay. Okay. You know, it's funny, the cast right before that, I had a really nice hit. Absolutely. And, and, uh... Look at the knot he's made. He really wants that fly. Wow. Great little fly. I'm going to release him now. That's it. There you go. Sea run trout. He's just trying to find his way over that rock. Yeah. He'll be good. There he goes. He learned after a while, you know, that he has to go <laughs> around the stone. <laughs> yeah. What do you think they need in order to turn these fish on during the day? About nine inches of water would yeah. do. The thing is, we haven't had water in a long time. So for the first maybe seven or eight hours, it's going to be a dirty flood. All yeah, the leaves yeah. and debris are going to be washed down. But once that clears and the water starts to clear itself, the fishing will be phenomenal. <laughs> there we go. Now you've been doing that a few times too, in order to pick that out. I think I'd still be here another 10 minutes. Well, I've been doing a lot of night fishing, and you do it by feel. Remember, a knot is only a series of loops. But if you pull it tight and get agitated, it's then over. Then it's over. You just be and gentle, gently, 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 gently. As they say in Africa, poly, poly. <laughs> slowly, slowly. What is the setup? I haven't had a chance to look at this it. This is a nine foot, six, seven weight rod. Okay. Um, not an expensive rod. You know what to say about fishing? It's a jerk on one end of the line waiting for a jerk on the other. <laughs> Yeah, I heard that. Look at your little fly. Yeah. It's just a little piece of silver with a small bit of hackle, and it's a killer. That's a very traditional Irish fly right there. Absolutely. It's called um, the silver spider. Silver spider. Silver spider. And this little boy here is a famous Irish fly, the teal-blown silver. You always fish blue for fresh sea trout. Blue, anything with blue and silver, fresh sea trout, or, as we say, black and silver. Oh, come on. Here he is. There you're a good man. Well done. That's a little bit of movement. I'll just get down here this again. This guy now. just made a little bit of a run. There you go. Yeah, he's on the top dropper. You get a sense there's just a ton of them in there because if you land it in the right area, yeah, they're on. There are actually, I suppose, over 100 fish in the pool. And that's not counting the fish that are running through. That are just moving right through. Absolutely, yeah. If you remember when we started, when the light came on first, all those fish, they were moving up. Yeah. And we turned them back. My wife's family's all from Ireland. And they're in the Ross Common up in Castle Ray area. Yes, yes. And now they're spread out yeah. between the Flanagans and the Farrells. Good enough. That's why started good coming Irish over. Names. Yeah, good Irish yeah, names. Yeah. The thing about an Irish name, there's nearly always a no in front of it. In Gaelic. Like if you're Farrell, you'd be O Farrell. O is for male and Ni would be for well, I didn't female. Know that. Oil, I did not know oil, that. Or we distinguish them, yeah. You know, next to the, <laughs> next to they want to go fishing. <laughs> All right, Frank said. When that. you're going oh, fishing, yeah. when you're going fishing, you must be glum. Yeah, that's exactly. Going out the door, I have to do this. I really don't want uh, to do it. If you yeah. haven't learned the fine art of that, because yeah. if you go out the door like a spring chicken, excited to find the day, oh. that's when they start sensing that you're oh. having too much fun and they're going to shut it down. Yeah, and if they think you're having fun, <laughs> they, they, didn't, they didn't marry you to have fun, did they? <laughs> do you know what women do when they when they marry you? they change you. Over three or four years, they change you and they change you. And then they'll wake up someone and they say, you're not the man I married. <laughs> oh, 
we are in very, very dangerous waters. And I'm not talking about the ones behind us. Well, I'm only, I'm only in change of the water at the moment. <laughs> you don't know how yeah. deep you're but in I, right now. I know this is not going to be shown in Ireland. <laughs> so I'm, I can be very brave now. Right now, you're up to your neck in water. Well, time to, time to start backpedaling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, I might be the one treading water when we get home. But a lot of that was Frank. Blame me. <laughs> Blame me, yeah. All right, let's get after yeah. this. Call me Michael. That's exactly yeah. what I'm going to call you. <laughs> There you go. Well done. You've hit the spot now. Yeah, now, now it's, like you said, we start to dial it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah, not easy. No, that's it. At nighttime, like you said, use all the senses. Yeah. A little better fish. No, feisty. Look at that, Frank, huh? Actually, he is a better fish. A better fish. Not quite the pound, but not far off it. Yeah, look at the look at the color on these fish, how fresh they are from just moving in. As we say, a bar of silver. Barrel of silver? A bar. A, a bar, bar of silver. A bar of oh, silver, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just beautiful, huh? There he goes. After a successful night of fishing on the river in Owen Moore, we awoke to a beautiful day in Ireland that would have us navigating the Connor Pass, a narrow mountain road known for its single lane and steep and dangerous cliffs. On the other side of the mountain, we reached the town of Dingle, a famous tourist destination on the south side of the peninsula. There, we unpacked our bags at the Dingle Skellig, a four-star hotel located alongside the picturesque Dingle Harbor. The hotel features a spa, pool, and restaurant that offers guests complimentary breakfast service along with the commanding views of the hills, harbor, and historic medieval architecture that dots the landscape. Once settled in at the hotel, we took a short walk into town and met up with brothers Paul and Shane O'Reilly, our Inland Fisheries Ireland advisors at the John Benny Pub. After a great meal and another quick walk, it was time to introduce the crew to a favorite traditional Irish pub, Paddy Bond Brosnan's, where locals gathered with instruments in the hand to create the entertainment for the evening. The energy in the room was immediately apparent. The music within the pub felt like it brought folks closer and created a sense of community among everyone inside. With the new day upon us and a fresh rain overnight, we headed back up over Connor Pass to meet up with Frank Monzo. Hidden deep in the peat bogs, we trudged through the moors until we reached a deep cut in the river. Your first cast, touch that rock. Okay. Now work it out, middle of the pool, leave it swinging. When it comes to the white water, lift, extra bit of line, cast. Okay, so middle of the pool first. Oh yeah, always. You see, you'll be landing in the calm water on the far side, come through the current, and as it comes into the white water, draw in a small bit of line, get a movement, lift, and cast. Throw it again, okay. If, uh, if you can avoid the, 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 the false, false cast. Yeah. Oh, okay. You full line out, lift, cast. We have nice cloud cover and right. just lift and then just slowly. Lift. Yeah. And out again. Okay. A little further up. No, 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 that's fine. From now on, aim for the second rock now. Got it. Aim for it. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Okay. Drop the tip of your rod and go for it now. Go, go. Excellent. 
You can take another small piece of line off now. Ooh, fish. He's at you. There you are. He, like you said, he's at the very back of yeah, the yeah, pool, yeah, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is sea trout. Keep him out from underneath there. Keep him out, that's it. Keep him out. I'm going to try to lift him up right to you there. Ready? Coming in. Okay, I just him. He's in a white now, just for him. He's a what? He's in, he's in about a week. He's that, in from, that's he, a yearling, right? First one. This a, yeah, a junior. He's in about a week. You see the silver is going off him, yeah. I just didn't go. We're expecting big things out of you now. <laughs> Although the conditions had improved from the night before, we struggled to locate sea run trout or salmon and decided to continue downstream where the fish were likely to begin entering the river. As the sun set and the light began to fade, Frank headed to the mouth of the river just below the bridge with the hope that the twilight hour might turn on the fish. A sea runner or a, or a, a nice fish about, you know, a sea, a sea trout um, has a nice wide girt in him. Beautiful sea run. Now, what did he take? It's a fly that's just particular to the river itself. It's, um, I just even go now. Island affords quite a varied environment for fishing from the rivers and streams to the locks that dot all of Ireland. Throughout the country, Ireland boasts a great deal of skilled gillies who specialize in these various fisheries. One such spot, Loch Coran, in the town of Waterville offers crystal clear water teeming with sea run trout and salmon surrounded by picturesque rolling green hills. We rose again for another day in Ireland with a plan to take the wild Atlantic way to Kenmare, where we left the coastal narrows for a more travel road and encountered some minor traffic arriving into town. Our adventure took us through Kenmare to Sheen Falls Lodge, a beautiful top-rated five-star lodge nestled alongside the River Sheen. Featuring immaculate grounds with world-class amenities, Sheen Falls is known as a destination unto itself. The first few kilometers of the River Sheen is private, reserved for residents in the area and the guests of Sheen Falls, which helps protect the fishery from poachers and overfishing. When the water is high, these initial pools can be quite productive and trophy Atlantic salmon are caught every year. Brendan Grant, one of Sheen Falls resident gillies, met us at the lodge's tackle room. He was to be our guide and take us up the River Sheen with the hope at one last shot for wild Atlantic salmon a shot that we desperately needed. So this is all private water here. Brandon. It's all private water, yeah. For the first kilometer, it's guests, residents only for the hotel. Wow. 
So we're going to be throwing right now, kind of. Um, we'll just throw into it. And then just in kind here. of retrieve now, and though, retrieve. right? Slow, 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 slow down, retrieve slow for the salmon because yeah. they're going to be a little sluggish. Yeah, but hopefully up above, they're still trying to run up above. Okay. And they're sitting at the bottom of the falls up there. How far is the, the stream up? About, about a kilometre. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Boy, that took a little while. I'm in tight now. Hooked him a little bit further down, but uh, I think he's real tired. Oh, no, he's not ready to go yet. He's trying to make a run right at me. Whoa. He's going to come right at you. He's coming at you. Oh, hoo -hoo. that's what we came for. Here. Beautiful salmon. You can see that he's got marks on him. Now, Brandon, is that from just because of the fact that the water's so warm right now, these fish are really sluggish? They've, they've took a beating coming up the falls. So they've beat themselves up, like, you know, they've, they've battered themselves trying to get up the falls because there's no water. Yeah. So they've been all going against the rocks. Besides the fact that everything that we walked up down there is just brutal as far as how hard these fish have to work in order to get here. I'm going to show the folks at home what we've been trying to catch. All right, fella. That's what we've been chasing for a while. Oh, this guy's still fresh. <laughs> Look at this. Just a great fish. I don't know if we get this guy back in or is he on the dinner table? I'd say, uh, I'd say take him. Despite a 50 year drought and tough fishing conditions, we finally landed a true native Atlantic salmon. The fish of a thousand casts definitely lived up to its reputation. It was hard to leave Sheen Falls, but with family to catch up with, we headed north of Castle Ray, Ross Common. I would sneak in one day with guide Bodo Funky, who I had fished with two years earlier up on Lock Arrow and search a big pike on the fly. By getting to experience a wonderful group of gillies and a vibrant culture, a culture that I fell in love with many years ago, was well worth the trip. With such a wide variety of fishing opportunities, it was easy to see why fishing in Ireland was a true angling adventure. <laughs> 